Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is really about the legal aspects of our life. It's about our opportunities to share who we are in a legal way. When we look to get married, we have to have a legal document that presents our birth certificate and our information for the local people to accept our marriage proposal between the person that we love and the person that we long to be with, if you will, has got to provide their copies too. When someone monkeys around with the person's physical body in the way of a physician who literally decides to botch a surgery or cut things off that is not their proper rights, we literally have only the retaliation of a lawsuit. If we no longer can afford a lawyer, we're sort of in a lurch situation. We literally don't know what to do because the lawyers all want to get paid just like we do. The people who have poverty are the hardest hit because lawyers profess to do pro bono work, but very few actually do it in the areas where the impoverished really need help. You see, people get harmed every single day by the liars of the land. And I talk about the liars of the land a great deal because people think that if they lie, they win something with God, I guess. You see, people have so gotten far off the track of loving God and understanding peace that we literally are putting people in legal jeopardies all day long. We are frankly talking in a way that we think we own a company and we just may be a mere manager of a retail store. We might be only assistant manager. We might be a divisional manager, but we are not the actual president of the entire national corporation or Midwestern corporation or for that matter, the local company. We are representing someone else's money, time, and investment. And if we're the owner and we're rude to customers, it literally creates a marketing plan of at least hitting 250 people with that day's roughness and little imposition that we've put on someone who might have just discovered our little restaurant, who might have told 250 people what a great place it was until someone representing our firm lied, stole, or cheated something away from that customer. You see, in life, we have people who pretend to be employees. They are called the pretenders, and that is something that's coming up in an upcoming film, but it's also been shown in a movie called Catch Me If You Can. Leonardo DiCaprio played the lead in that film, and it was sort of a fascinating study of a real person who decided to make himself millions, pretend to be a doctor, and just kept shifting his life until finally the FBI caught up with him, allowed him to make a film, and allowed them to get helped by him in something, I guess, in order to get him out of whatever the hell he was in. Isn't that interesting that the people who do serious damage in people's lives often get away with that because somebody needs their skill sets? You see, in life, we have people who lie, steal, and cheat people from their life. They go in ahead of a person, they take their technology over, and they decide that they're going to play God in that person's life. But how do the people of God, Christians, and other people of spirituality and faith, Wiccans alike, who believe in a God as well, so we don't want to discriminate against any religious group at all, we just want to put it out there as let the spiritual community at large. How does the spiritual community at large respond to these liars? Every single particular religious doctrine, if you will, that is in the positivity of the love of a God, regardless of the name utilized to describe that Lord of all things, the designer and divine architect of the entire natural and physical world and human beings, is literally represented in that doctrine. That doctrine's philosophy is what leads people in their study of that faith practice whatever it may be, whether it may be the magic of God or the magic of the earth or Mother Nature, it's hard to say, but everybody has that principal freedom of religion right in the United States, thankfully underneath the First Amendment. When we play Lord in someone's life, though, when we decide to take over their technology, when we decide to punish someone in our own mindset that we have done so legally, We have to stop and ask the question, have we done so morally, but who is practically the judge of that decision? You see, morally, I might not agree with someone's principle of playing with a certain animal in their religious practice. I don't have to say what that is. I can just say that generally, 
I don't like that idea because the Lord didn't say go play with animals as a religion. At least, I don't think so. We have long been since the days of slaughtering the fatted calf in honor of God, thankfully, so we're not abusing animals, and we're not talking about destroying life in a stupid movement of paganism. Even the pagans don't do that stuff anymore. You see, the preciousness of the earth and animals and people has come into its realm of its own, thankfully. And we have learned to love, honor, and regard all life, most of us. But when we talk about the destruction of a life, we usually only refer to murder. But we don't talk about the murder of a person's human life in their career, and we don't literally discuss the way that people destroy souls in their rudeness representing organized religion. Today, I made several phone calls that supposedly reached the organizations that I was calling. I had a practical purpose for calling because there are gaps in the homeless community for gaining help on simple bills when a person's struggling and simple needs of daily food when most food pantries operate on a weekly basis with the presumption that a person has a shelter of some sort in which they literally have a safe passage to live. For the people who are truly impoverished and truly do not have anything, they may travel with nothing because they've learned that things don't matter anymore. For the people who are still striving to put their lives back together, they might carry a bag or two because practically they need a computer to get employment and thriftly they need clothes that are clean and washed at the local laundromats, which thankfully some communities still have and some are pretty good most of the time, especially in Ohio. But in truth, we have to look at the practicalities of daily life. A person typically eats somewhere between three and six meals a day, depending on how they've managed their health care in terms of that physical need of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. When a person does not have love in their life, they might struggle. If a person has children, they have a reason to go on working and fighting, and they also get usually a lot of help from local organizations because women and children are often touted as the most sufferers of the plight of impoverished thinking. I'm not sure that's exactly true, but it does impact those people. You see, when a man goes through struggle, the immediate attitude of other men, women and children even, is go get a job. Well, that would be practical if the technology allowed us to do that. When a technology person has decided to infiltrate an individual's life and play a game on their life in that, that all their calls are directed to alleged voicemails with no names or old-fashioned answering machines that don't actually work anymore or things like that which don't seem real to the current state of society where just about everybody has a voicemail and just about everybody puts the name or their own personal voice on that voicemail, we have to question and raise the question whether or not people are being murdered with technology. Now, when I talk about this, some people say, okay, he's old school. He wants us to go back to the old days of a line phone and an answering machine that we hit a button on right in front of us to get the message. And some of me, part of me, does think that is literally the way to go in life. You see, these pockets of minutes shared across a platform that may not be large enough to receive all the expansive network communications that are going on in the world might actually literally leave people impoverished and other people gaining wealth. There might literally be a system now in place with the current presidential folks that says these people are okay to have stars on theirs, but these people are not okay to have stars on theirs. Obviously, you're getting the theme and reference to a children's book from Dr. Seuss, who may have long passed away, I'm not sure, but in reality, what we're looking at is, how do I stop punching in radio time to let you know that when a person's life is decided not worthy, we are in a slippy slope towards the Nazism of old Germany and those situations of concentration camps and imprisonment of people who literally just needed a slap on the wrist and a lesson or two about how to get out of poverty. You see, if we had more educational channels on television, is not the reality that if we put a higher value 
on education, higher value on sharing true information about how technology is used across all forms of government interactions with our life, then we might be able to stop those who are stealing from us. There's a very easy stop to the theft of mail. There's also a very easy solution to people's cars getting hacked into. By going back to a more traditional, old-fashioned lock is not the truth, but by teaching people that it's simply not proper to steal. What a concept. What if we started educating our children that it's not polite, it's not proper, it's not acceptable, it's not honorable, it's not regardful, it's not respectful to steal from people? What if we actually produced a force in the land that was interested in only honoring God's plan for people's lives, meaning they are allowed to run into total strangers and ask them an actual question without some pastor or priest or secretary thinking that they have a lawful right to represent that individual in their soul. Now, the reason I'm hitting on this is because practically I've been at a project a little while, not long just long enough to get the experience of what happens when technology is stolen from a human being's life in a monstrous way to demonize the individual, to demoralize them, to shame them in sort of a way, to make them see they're not something in their soul. You see, the body can lie, human conditions do exist, and frankly, special needs have always been in existence since the beginning of time, yet there are people of the lie people of the lie in this land who take away rights that are imparted to us by our birthright here in America. Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is really about having the opportunities that the land we live in promises. It's about the right to having practically every aspect of our own body, physicality, mind, and spirit in our little control. It is not about the authorization of other people to the rights to our bodies and our physical life. It is most certainly not about authorizing some pastor or his staff to say, I'm sorry, you cannot talk to that person over there because you don't have a star on you that's good enough in front of Lord Jesus. Now, when we talk like this, when we speak in a way that's sort of monotone and sort of annoying and sort of punchy, we're trying to make a point. We're trying to say that when people do these little games of warfare, it's a spiritual attack. It's an attack on a soul in a personhood that has a body. The truth is that when we present ourselves to people in this global world, we rarely open the door like we've seen in some films of late with a total plastic suit on, hoping someone pays attention. Now, when I reference that film, Fried Green Tomatoes, I'm remembering a funny scene that a wife was trying desperately to get her man more interested in him, and she tried everything to get him to pay attention to her over the idiot box that my mother used to call a television. Now, when I say that reference, I'm not talking about anything other than people caring for one another, loving one another, having children together, and other things. But in truth, once the kids are gone, you're stuck with the man or woman that you chose, regardless of your interests. In truth, I'm punching it here a little bit, but I want to talk about the realities of organized people who say they help others. I called a particular Catholic church and got told that only if I talked to government would they be willing to possibly provide some help and provision of service. I thought, okay, I guess separation of church and state is not really happening here, but all right. Then I called that little organization and found there was a person who at first sounded like an American, and then all of a sudden had a huge, thick, serious Hispanic accent who literally couldn't understand the English words coming out of my mouth. I said, is there a supervisor that I might be able to talk to? And she then decided to get impertinent to demand my name that was responsible and required for talking to a man who is employed by the community government to serve people like me who live in this community. I understand the politeness of allowing someone a first name, 
but it's not really necessary to get an entire person's first name, last name, home address, and all that sort of stuff just to have a simple question answered when a secretary can't do her job literally because she's probably not the secretary at all. She might be a part of the technology hackers who are trying to destroy the fabric of America. But openly, I'm not poo-pooing any person that has a bicultural aspect to their life. I have a bicultural aspect to my life. I have a bilingual aspect to my life. I swear regularly in a foreign language just to make sure I'm not misheard by the wrong people. But openly, I say that a little tongue-in-cheek. It's a bit of a joke because a lay pastor, someone who's trying to produce interest in God, is able to say more real things than someone with a divination degree who's got to be all holier than thou. A priest goes to a lot of studies and a lot of classical literature in order to become that priest. A pastor goes to four or five years of a doctoral degree, I believe, but I'm not super in that area of life. But a person who loves God is talking openly only about God and is saying literally, let's get back to those little armbands that said, what would Jesus do if we are a person of spirituality that has a belief in a Lord Jesus? If we don't, then we might say, well, what would Muhammad do? Or what would a person who studies other aspects of nature do? Because every form of religion, as I began this audio cast, has a way that they believe that humans interrelate in a peaceful manner. The warmongers, the haters, the darksiders are not really in what I'm talking about. They're interested in producing as much mayhem in the world as possible, and they do it by being people of the lie. In my upcoming film, The Dragon Priest, we sort of have to look at the life of a man whose life has been stolen from him completely. Sort of a comic book hero in a way, he struggles with the rage he feels and the desire to literally beat the snot out of these people who lie, steal, and cheat him out of a life including members of his own family. Bloodlines do not create automatically honest people. Sisterhood is not necessarily something only in a nunnery. Brotherhood is not something only in a priest's or monk's realm. The land of people, the land of the prideful, the land of the good folk in planet Earth have to find a way to live without lying, stealing, and cheating other people out of their rightful names, property, and personhood. I talk about this in my marketing video about how marketing politicians should work. That most people in the world are concerned with their personhood, paperwork, and their property. But how do people of the lie hit people? They go after their personhood, their, per their paperwork, and their property. That has literally been done to me. It's a hate crime. It's absolutely a hate crime for some unknown person or known person to let a person be asleep, and then you decide to undress them literally and shave their legs. Most men and women of a good nature would be mortified if someone illegally, immorally, illicitly did that to them. When I talk openly about the threats to my life and others, people laugh. They think it's a joke. They practically think they'll just play along with whatever any official tells them because they don't recognize people of the lie. You see, people of the lie lie really well until they slip. And then they slip more and more. And then they try to lie to get out of their lie. They produce the lie to protect the people they lied and pretended to be. And then they think the person listening didn't get it already from God that they lied. You see, people of the lie are not a part of the Lord's house. They're not a part of any God's house when they lie. And they pretend to believe that they have the right to take a person's honorable birthright or their right to choose their life. The right to choose their own life is a moral ground that is practically written very clearly in the Bible and other religious works around the globe. And yet we have people of the lie in positions of power who lie, steal, and cheat a person out of technology which allows them the opportunities to seek employment but also allows them the opportunities to receive help and assistance for food, shelter, water, and literally toileting opportunities. 
People of the lie throw people out into the freezing cold. People of the lie claim to go to hospitals to imply that they are not well enough to receive help or give help. People of the lie don't listen well when a stranger calls. They warp a story. They call and make waves instead of picking up the telephone and calling the individual they might be confused about and saying, okay, I'm a little confused here. I just want to make sure I'm not misrepresenting what you're thinking, what you're feeling here, or what you're needing. Could we chart all over when I can give you my 100% attention instead of me literally being in the car and being unable to respond with the grace of the Lord Jesus in my soul? When we talk like this, people sort of turn us off because most people are more proud to display a emblem for a sports team, an old alma mater, or some local child's program over displaying a cross on their chest. Most people in marketing run directly in the opposite direction of any business person that puts a cross on their card. You see, the cross of the Lord is something I might wear on my finger, but it's related to an old way of living. My cross doesn't look like a normal crucifixion cross. There is no Jesus on it or off of it. It looks sort of like a plus sign, but it's an old Christian relic. I wear it to remind myself, not anyone else, that I must walk my faith. That as much as I like to swear like a sailor sometimes when I'm passionately upset about the ravaging of a person's life and the rights violations that people who say they love that individual take, I don't buy it by what they do in private and in secret to harm a person's rights. You see, human rights are not moral rights. Human rights are what the Lord bestows And people cause the degeneration or degradation, sorry, the degradation of other people. Degradation. I'm getting my pronunciation off a little bit here. And that degradation of people is the beginning of the sales of their bodies in slavery, the sales of their body parts in illegal medical stuff, the opportunities for raping a person's body without consent, the ravaging of a person's mind by the demoralization of pretending they're not well, and yet these people say they're a person of faith. I don't practically buy it, and most other people listening to the story won't either. You see, when you'd have to tell the truth on your life, it's about what is the truth that's important. Is the truth of our lives important with regard to our profession? Is the truth of our lives important with regard to our personal life? Is the truth of our lives important with regard to our spiritual or intimate life? And of those truths, what is our proper right to decide who holds information about those actual facts of our life is in our control. The minute we share truth, it becomes gossip with the gossipers and people of the lie who thought they had rights to share that information. They didn't. They didn't promise to keep it secret, but there is an old way of thinking that information shared in trust is honoring that person who received that trust. And it is a breaching of planet Earth's trust in human beings to dishonor that intimate relationship between two souls having a conversation and literally getting to know one another. See, I've never shared the name of the person that I deeply cared for. I've never shared the name necessarily of my life partner of many years who practically moved across the world to love somebody like me. The reality is when we talk about these things, we don't have rights to share. We just know when to protect ourselves better. That people destroy people with questions. In the Japanese community, we have certain things we don't ask people. In other foreign countries, certain questions that are natural to Americans are actually rudeness in those cultures. Someplace, I pray and hope, I still have a book called 
uh, I believe it is Eat, Drink, and Bow or something like that in different countries around the world. I was fascinated to learn that certain things that are natural to my business lexicon of interacting with a human being here in adult society would be utter rudeness in some of the European nations. And when we have an influx of people from foreign lands, we sort of have to start to learn some of those cultural differences or they are required by our laws to learn what's appropriate here. When they don't, we suffer. Practically, I've been hit upon by many Hispanics of late that don't sound like they really represent the place I'm calling. It makes me leery of that culture, which isn't fair to them at all. But it openly says if they've lied... On behalf of a company, they've made other people completely legally liable for their lie. When you call and profess to be someone you're not, it might be a way to protect a personal privacy issue, but at the same time, it might also put someone in legal jeopardy. Now, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference. Reporters lie sometimes. They don't lie about what they're doing. They don't lie about who they are to the right people. But if they're not sure about someone's ability to keep them safe physically from harm, they might shift a name or two. They might decide to protect their rights to privacy by just doing some exploratory research without saying, Hi, I'm so-and-so from blah, 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 TV. They might just pretend to be someone to see whether or not the protocols of safety and privacy of information are truly in place. In life, we have moments of time to decide whether or not to trust someone. Those moments of time are based on how we're feeling in that moment. But that moment of time can be utterly destroyed when that individual, that person we cared for, that person we love, decides to take our intimate, private talk and personal interpersonal relationship into other people's minds, meaning they gossip about what they learned or what they discussed. They ping people on the telephone and say, get here, let's get this recorded. Or they literally just destroy a person's life because they're participating in that plan, which is not on God's house. You see, God's plan for people's lives is pretty straightforward. Love God, love other people, create peace in the world. Yet people don't do that. They lie to themselves about their powers in other people's lives. They steal from their property, which isn't lawful in any way, shape, or form in front of the house of God, and openly they destroy the souls of people through their lies about their proper rights to someone's body, home, property, if you will, possessions, better term, and their relationships. Now, as I close this audio cast, I'm challenging you to look at your life. I'm saying, hey, are you completely happy in your life? Are you prepared for retirement that you can totally protect yourself in all things, illness and good health? Do you have enough money in the bank to take care of yourself? Or do you too also need other relationships for those old days when ears are less able to hear, eyes are less able to see, Bodies are less able to function because, in general, human beings go through this decomposition transition where our cells literally deteriorate, where we're not as strong, we're not as physically fit, we don't have as much stamina, we can't stand as long, and that is a practical, applicable, provable aspect of the human condition. So when I talk like this, I'm being real, I'm being authentic, I'm being transparent, But there are probably things in your life that you would never share with me ever in a million years. And there might be some things in my life that I might not ever share with you in a million years. But openly, if we've created a real loving relationship, I might tell you a few things. Or I might tell you many things. But here's something I will never in a million years do to your life. I will never step into your life and say, I'm going to control what you do, how you feel, what you wear, what you eat, what you think, what you're going to do with your own human body and all the hair on it or not on it is literally yours. Thanks for listening.